Hey everyone, welcome to Living a Country. I'm Holly and today we get to visit another beautiful home today. And today we get to visit my friend Lindy from Our Vintage Farm today. And Lindy, she lives in Australia. So it is actually, instead of spring and summer like it is for us in the United States, it's actually autumn for her. So it's gonna be so neat to see the difference between the seasons and we get to go visit her at her authentic farmhouse. So you're gonna get to see her outside of her house, the inside of her house and how beautiful it is inside. So I'm so excited. Lindy has some beautiful, beautiful taste and I'm so excited for you guys to walk through it, see how she's kept some of its beautiful charm and let's go ahead and welcome her here today. Hi there everybody, it's Lindy from Our Vintage Farm on Instagram and Facebook and today I'm going to take you on a tour of the inside of our 1895 farmhouse. It's pretty windy here at the moment, so I just sneaked out to get an intro so you can see what the front of our house looks like. And we're gonna go inside and have a look now. So when you come into our house, the first thing that you see is our grand hallway. We have original ceilings, which we had to paint because when we moved in, just beyond the archway, there was a great big spiral staircase that took up a lot of space and went up into the attic bedrooms. So we've since moved that. So as you can see, our farmhouse has original floors and a lot of original details and I like to decorate in a fairly traditional vintage sort of style but with a bit of a quirky twist I suppose. Most of the things that you see in our house are second hand, so thrifted or they've been bought at auction except for things like beds and that sort of thing. When we moved in, we had to have all our lighting redone and all of the walls had to be painted and wallpaper stripped. This is one of our guest bedrooms where my son and his girlfriend like to stay when they come to visit us from the other side of Australia. I made the DIY uh, wall hangings using vintage prints that I downloaded from the internet and the drop cloth curtains, obviously, very farmhouse. The paintings over on the wall, the little watercolors, were done by my great, great, great aunt. And as you can see, uh, our styling is very minimal and a little bit quirky. So all of the rooms in our house have been redecorated. We've done most of them. We have done all the floors ourselves, restained them, and I did all the wallpapering in the hallway and all the painting. I do all the wallpapering and the painting. My husband likes to do the outside of the house. So this bedroom over here is the master bedroom. This is our bedroom. When we moved in, this was a dining room and there's a door that's not finished there because that goes through to our new ensuite, which is under construction. But next to that door where the painting is, there was a big 70s archway. Somebody had taken the chimney out. There was a chimney, so the roof has been patched up there. The ceiling has been patched. But these are the original ceilings. This is the color that all of the ceilings were when we moved in. And as you can see, we have drop cloth curtains and a lot of vintage styling. I've recently been playing around with uh, topiaries. So these, I have a few ivy topiaries in our house. We have a sort of a neutral theme, I suppose, with a bit of color. And I like to use vintage prints, so as you can see over there, 
There's a couple of vintage prints on the wall which tie in with the blue theme. The lamps were from our old house. I spray painted them and covered them with hessian because they were black and there was just too much black in the room. The uh, curtains are also drop cloth but have been uh, trimmed and hemmed this time. And at the foot of our bed, we have a chest which we keep all our blankets and things in because uh, my husband gets very cold. He works on the other side of Australia, so when he comes home, he's feeling it's pretty cold here, so he feels the cold a lot. So we have lots of layers and lots of blankets. Okay, let's go into the hall. So as you can see in the hall, I've created a gallery wall for family photos. It looks pretty modern because I've used all of the black modern frames from Target, but it has a lot of photos from my family. So it's got my grandparents, my mum and dad, my, our children. I like a sort of fairly uh, organised gallery wall. And down below is part of the little dining setting that I picked up. There are two chairs that go with this that I got for $50 and I recovered it with buffalo check and gingham. That used to be in our kitchen until the other week. I'll show you why in a minute. There's lovely details on it. I wanted a love seat for a really long time. Okay, so once we go through the arch, we can see down into the kitchen. The French doors uh, were not there. We had a sort of 70s office door when we moved in, which uh, the builder took out and we replaced it with the doors that we got at auction for $15. Just finished restaining this buffet. It did have uh, a lot of colours, about seven. And then just to give it a bit of height, I've just added a Japanese silkworm tray and a little vignette. that shows uh, some children's toys that we found under the floor and also uh, a rock <laughs> shaped like a love heart that my husband brought me home from work and a quote from my favourite book which is uh, Pride and Prejudice. I also like to collect plates but I don't collect too many because I don't want to have the house filled with lots and lots of stuff. I prefer plain and simple. So this is I actually got all of these except for the middle one uh, at the same time in a box for five dollars and they're sort of a lemon colour. It's a bit hard to see in this light. There's another view of the hall from the top of the front door. So the timber is Baltic pine, that's why it's that sort of faded yellow colour that hasn't been treated. I just stripped it all back and then I uh, gave it a coat of matte varnish to protect it. I forgot to show you these, so I should go back down and show you. I love these two little antique prints. There we go. Which um, were gifted to me from an antique shop in Victoria. Their original oil paintings from France. I think they add just a lovely little vintage touch because as you can see we have modern and vintage sort of mixed throughout our home. Okay let's go down into the kitchen now. So when we moved into our house as I said there was a uh, spiral staircase sort of where I'm standing now and we had it taken out and we've had this set of stairs put in which is sort of like hidden stairs we can't go up there that's my office is up there <laughs> um, because I stained the stairs last night and they're still wet so 
maybe another time. This is our kitchen. Our kitchen was an empty room when we moved in. The floorboards were rotten and uh, so we, we had to have them replaced with new floorboards that matched. And we also had new um, skirting boards made and new architraves of mouldings to match the ones in the rest of the house because they'd all been ripped out. So our range hood canopy, which is the size of the chimney that was there, um, is clad in the old floorboards that were left over. And then we have a black kitchen. I really like our black kitchen. I use a lot of jute throughout our house because it's functional. It looks rustic with our sort of farmhouse feel. And this is our kitchen island. It used to be our kitchen table. <laughs> But we put some a shelf on the bottom of it and some casters and we made it into an island. We did that a, a week or so ago. So our dining table used to be in here, we changed it around. I'm really happy with how it looks now. We have a wine barrel chandelier and my dresser which has been I think in every house we've lived in. <laughs> It's been numerous colours also, but is now back to the stripped wood. This is our everyday china. So even though we have an expensive willow pattern set there that was inherited from my grandma, and I have a lot more in the cupboard, uh, I still you, we still use it every day. It's mixed in with some just white china that we got, some pewter, and also um, some heritage white china that I found at an antique shop with the gold rim. So I like the little gold touches. And then to add extra height because our ceilings are very, very high, I've just put uh, a painting over the top. This is the other view. So from standing behind the island. And as you can see, we have an open plan kitchen and living area. This used to be two rooms when the house was first built, but the, where the bulkhead is up there, somebody uh, had taken that down before we arrived and made it into one room. So that part of the living room over there is where the kitchen used to be, which is why we have a double fireplace. Uh, I made the Shia Roman curtains using just a hot glue gun and some ribbon that didn't cost very much i don't i didn't want them to block the light i just wanted them to filter the light because that's the west out there there we go you can see it a bit better that's the west out there and it's um it's very bright <laughs> in the farmhouse sink and through here we'll just move out of that way there through here is our butler's pantry, which is why we don't have a lot of stuff out because everything is in hidden away in there. So again, it's decorated with a cabinet that I found and painted up to match the other cabinetry that were already there. And some vintage signs at the top, proper vintage tin signs go slowly back over here another one of those topiaries some drying herbs some eggs from our chickens back down the hall and then sort of into our living space so over here you can see a chiffonier that we got for $30 and I thought it was a fake one but uh, then I'm, when I started painting it, I realised it's actually black wood. <laughs> but I don't mind because I quite like it black. Like a touch of black in every room. And decorated simply with some gold, some more pewter. And a little painting that was given to me by my son. And then we have our lounge area. So the chairs that you saw in the other bedrooms were part of the set that belongs with that couch, but I painted them with chalk paint to put them in the bedrooms. 
And now we have this area here. Yes, we do have cow hides on the floor. Yes, they are fake. We also have a deer head that is above the canopy in case you hadn't noticed. But uh, my husband really loved it. So we have to let him have something that he likes in the house. I make all my own soft furnishings. So um, I recently changed out and made all of these new blue cushions in different, don't know if you can see that. There's stripes and florals. And then this is our mantelpiece. So I like to bring the outside in and at the moment our maple tree is starting to lose its leaves and I thought it was the perfect opportunity to bring a little bit of autumn colour into the house. The uh, right side of our fireplace is usually top to bottom with wood but at the moment it's a little bit cold so we are using all the wood up we have to replace it a lot. This is what it looks like on the other end of the living room. this way. So we have a door that goes around onto the veranda. The veranda wraps right around the house. I'm standing at the door now. Two front doors. And this is our whole living area. We do have another dining room but it's not finished yet. I want to say thank you to Holly for having me on this tour. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope that you have got some inspiration from it and that you will come over and say hi to me on Instagram or Facebook. I am at Our Vintage Farm and I share lots of DIYs and farm country living, lots of photos of our silly crazy animals, our cows and our sheep. It'd be really lovely to meet you. Thank you so much for having me, Holly. I'll talk to you all again soon. Bye. Thank you all so much for watching Living It Country today. And a big thank you to Lindy for opening up her beautiful, authentic farmhouse to us over in Australia. How cool is that? I will see you guys later on Living It Country, and I hope you guys all have a wonderful day. Bye.